Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about the chemical properties of the group 14 elements. Okay, so the heading is chemical properties. Okay, in the chemical properties, the chemical properties of any uh, group first of all depends upon how many electrons are there in the outermost shell. So first of all we would see what? We would see the oxidation state. That what is the oxidation state of the group 14 elements? Or in what oxidation states does the group 14 elements are there? Okay? So, you very well, I, in the last video I told you that uh, the electronic configuration of the group 14 elements was the electronic configuration was was ns2 and p2 okay so how many electrons are there in the outermost shell in the outermost shell there would be four electrons in outermost shell okay due to this fact due to this fact the oxidation states uh, of the group 14 elements are okay the general oxidation states are are plus 4 and plus 2. Now you may be wondering that since orbit, if there are if there are 4 electrons here then how how the oxidation state can be plus 2. The reason is that I told you also in, when, when I taught you group 13 elements the reason is due to the inert pair effect. Okay. Due to this inert pair effect the uh, outer uh, the uh, inner ns2 uh, uh, electrons okay these inner ns2 electrons these inner ns2 electrons fail to take part in bonding okay they do not dislodge and therefore the oxidation state observed is s2 okay so the reason for s2 oxidation state in higher elements that is down the group is what the reason is The reason is inert pair effect. Okay, this is the reason, and this effect the order of this is oxidation state plus 2. The order is it is less observed in uh, germanium then in tin and it is mostly observed in lead. Okay, so basically as we move down the group, the tendency of plus 2 oxidation state increases. This is what is in our effect. Okay, so let me write this down. As we move down the group, the tendency of plus 2 oxidation state increases okay so this is the point now let's focus on carbon first now carbon the covalency the maximum covalency for carbon is 4 carbon has maximum covalency 4 by this we mean that it can form at most 4 bonds okay for other elements elements in group okay the maximum covalency can be more okay the maximum covalency can be 
more than 4. Okay? The, the reason for this is for this is the availability of the D and F orbiters. Okay? D of D orbiter. Okay? Why D orbiter? No D orbiter for carbon. Okay? So due to the presence of D orbiter, what happens is that other elements, okay, uh, other elements can uh, increase their covalency to 6. Example is Si F6 mi 2 minus. Another example can be PbOH whole 6 2 minus. So you can see that uh, silicon here is forming 6 bonds with fluorine. Okay. Red also is forming 6 bonds with OH. So this, this is because they have D or beta present and therefore they can form bonds. Okay. Now the next uh, heading, the next property which we would see is reactivity towards oxygen. Okay, so we are we will see reactivity towards oxygen. How do group 14 elements react towards oxygen and which compounds are formed? Okay, so group 14 elements, okay, they form monoxide or dioxide. Sides and dioxides when reacted with oxygen. Okay, that is MO or MO2. Okay, therefore, monoxide or dioxide. Okay, now. You very well know the some of the monoxides, like for example, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, SiO2, okay, GeO2. These are some of the uh, common oxides. Now let's see the nature of these oxides, okay. Now, CO2, SiO2 and GeO2 okay these are acidic oxides okay these are acidic oxides okay now SnO2 and PbO2 okay these are amphoteric oxides okay and there are also some neutral oxides. Okay, there are neutral oxides like carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a, it is a neutral oxide. Okay, okay, and now there, now uh, let's see the other monoxides. The other monoxide like GeO, this is acidic, and again. SNO and PBO is amphoteric. Okay? So, what you can see over here, you can very well observe that tin oxide and red oxides are amphoteric in nature. Okay? So, you can remember this. That whether it is monoxide or dioxide, tin oxide and red oxide is amphoteric in nature. Okay? Now, let's see another property. The next property which we are going to see is reactivity towards water. Okay. Okay. Now, 
let's see what happens when we uh, uh, react uh, try to react the group 14 elements with water okay it is observed that carbon silicon and germanium do not react with water don't react with water or steam okay basically there is no effect of uh, water or steam on carbon silicon or germanium okay for tin tin reacts with steam okay tin reacts with steam to produce to produce what does it produce it produces sno2 and hydrogen gas okay tin reacts with steam to produce this okay now lead what happens there is a thin oxide film on lead on lead okay so so it is also unaffected by water or steam okay so only tin reacts with steam to produce sno2 and hydrogen and all the other elements do not react with water or steam okay now the next property which you are going to see is reactivity towards uh, hydrogens okay which compounds are formed when group 14 elements react with hydrogens okay now let's see so group 14 elements okay they form they form mx2 or mx4 type halides okay now again why do we see that there is only mx2 and mx4 it is because they have plus 2 oxidation state or plus 4 oxidation state okay higher elements will form mx2 and the lower elements will form mx4 okay now the point to observe over here is most mx4 halides are covalent in nature okay most mx4 halides are covalent in nature okay but some halides like sbi4 okay pbf4 are some halides like this are ionic in nature okay also pbi4 is not formed okay why does we uh, we uh, could not see pbi4 because because both pb and i because both pb and i are very large because of large size of both pv and i okay so there is very less overlapping of the orbitals of pv and i so pv i4 is not formed okay so with this i am over with the chemical properties of the 14 elements in the next video 
I will tell you about the anomalous behavior of carbon. Just as in uh, in any group, basically, it is seen that the first element of the group is uh, has shows anomalous behavior compared to the other elements. I told you about the anomalous behavior of boron in group 30. Similarly, in group 14, I will tell you about the anomalous behavior of carbon. Okay? So that's all for this video.